The Alchemist by Paulo Coelho, page 63 through 67. The boy went to his room and packed his belongings. They filled three sacks. As he was leaving, he saw in the corner of the room his old shepherd's pouch. It was bunched up and he had hardly thought of it for a long time. As he took his jacket out of the pouch, thinking to give it to someone in the street, the two stones fell to the floor, Urim and Thummim. It made the boy think of the old king, and it startled him to realize how long it had been since he had thought of him. For nearly a year, he had been working incessantly, thinking only of putting aside enough money so that he could return to Spain with pride. Never stop dreaming, the old king had said. Follow the omens. The boy picked up Urim and Thummim, and once again, he had a strange sensation that the old king was nearby. He had worked for hard for, for a year, and the omens were that it was time to go. I'm going to go back to doing what just what I did before, the boy thought, even though the sheep didn't teach me to speak Arabic. But the sheep had taught him something even more important, that there was a language in the world that everyone understood, a language the boy had used throughout the time that he was trying to improve things at the shop. It was the language of enthusiasm, of things accomplished with love and purpose, and as part of a search for something believed in and desired. Tangier was no longer a strange city, and he felt that, just as he had conquered this place, he could conquer the world. When you want something, all the universe conspires to help you achieve it, the old king had said. But the old king hadn't said anything about being robbed or about endless deserts or about people who know what their dreams are but don't want to realize them. The old king hadn't told him that the pyramids were just a pile of stones or that anyone could build one in his backyard. And he for had forgot to mention that when you have enough money to buy a flock larger than the one you had before, you should buy it. The boy picked up his pouch and put it with his other things. He went down the stairs and found the merchant waiting on a foreign couple while two other customers walked about the shop drinking tea from the gla crystal glasses. It was more activity than usual for this time in the morning. From where he stood, he saw for the first time that the old merchant's hair was very much like the hair of the old king. He remembered the smile of the candy seller on his first day in Tangier when he had nothing to eat and nowhere to go. That smile had also been like the old king's smile. It's almost as if he had been here and left his mark, he thought, and yet none of these people had ever met the old king. On the other hand, he said that he always appeared to help those who are trying to realize their personal legend. He left without saying goodbye to the crystal merchant. He didn't want to cry with the other people there. He was going to miss the place and all the good things he had learned. He, has more, he was more confident in, in himself, though, and felt as though he could conquer the world. But I'm going back to the fields that I know to take care of my flock again, he said to himself with certainty, but he was no longer happy with his decision. He had worked for an entire year to make a dream come true, and that dream, minute by minute, was becoming less important, maybe because that really wasn't his dream. Who knows? Maybe it's better to be like the crystal merchant, never go to Mecca, and just go through life wanting to do so, he thought, again, trying to convince himself. But as he held Urim and Thummim in his hand, they transmitted to him the strength and will of the old king. By coincidence, or maybe it was an omen, the boy thought he came to the bar he had entered on his, on his first day there. The thief wasn't there, and the owner brought him a cup of tea. I can always go back to being a shepherd, the boy thought. I learned how to care for sheep, and I haven't forgotten how that's done. But maybe I'll never have another chance to get to the pyramids of Egypt. The old man wore a breastplate of gold, and he knew about my past. He really was a king, a wise king. The hills of Andalusia were only two hours away, but there was an entire desert between him and the pyramids. Yet the boy felt that there was another way to regard his situation. He was actually two hours closer to his treasure. The fact that two hours had stretched into an entire year didn't matter. I know why I want to get back to my flock, he thought. I understand sheep. They're no longer a problem and they can be good friends. On the other hand, I don't know if the desert can be a friend. And if it's in the desert and it's in the desert that I have to search for my treasure. If I don't find it, I can always go home. I finally have enough money and all the time I need. Why not? He suddenly felt tremendously happy. He could always go back to being a shepherd. He could always become his crystal salesman again. Maybe the world had other hidden treasures, but he had had a dream. But, but he had a dream and he had met with the king. That doesn't happen to just anyone. He was planning as he left the bar. He had remembered that one of the crystals merchants suppliers transported his crystal by means of caravans that crossed the desert. He held Urim and Thummim in his hand. Because of those two stones, he was once again on the way to his treasure. I am always nearby when someone wants to realize their personal legend, the old king had told him. What would it cost to go over to the supplier's warehouse and find out if the pyramids were really that far away?